Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here on our YouTube channel for episode number one, or 1039. Man, I'm glad I'm not still in the 100s, but uh, happy to be here with episode 1039, and thank you very much for, uh, for being here. Well, today we are going to talk about just one of the best entrepreneurial businesses that I have seen high school students start, and that is finding old equipment that they can fix up old engines, they can fix up, they can get them running again, and then they can turn around and sell those for a profit. It leads into so many different entrepreneurial directions. I love profiling this, and today we're going to be speaking with a young man named Isaiah Hopkins coming to us from Tunstall High School in Dry Fork, Virginia. He's going to talk to us exactly about that, and we're going to get that started for you right now. Isaiah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on today. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it is very nice to meet you as well. And uh, happy to make your acquaintance. I I very much enjoyed uh, the interviews I've been able to conduct so far from Tunstall High School and looking forward to speaking with you. Uh, so you're obviously at school today. It looks like you're at school anyway. Yeah, sure am. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this. Uh, I, I'd love to get some more information about you and kind of get to know you a little bit before we jump into talking about your supervised agricultural experience. Would that be all right with you? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, so when you are not at school, and you're at home. Are you in town? Are you out on a farm or something like in the middle of those two? Well, I would say, I guess in between, I'm usually, um, see, I buy and sell dirt bikes. I, okay. I, I do that a lot. I buy an old dirt bike, um, buy the parts to fix it and make profit off of it. I okay. sell it. it on, usually use Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace to sell it. Okay. Gotcha. That's what I do. And other than that, um, sometimes on, on on farms or property, mowing yards, doing landscaping. Gotcha. Okay. That's really interesting. And I'm, I'm really eager to talk to you about that. I wanted to ask you, uh, so just so we can get kind of a, kind of frame the picture of where you live. So not quite in town, not necessarily on a working farm, but with a little bit of property that allows you to to work on dirt bikes and do stuff like that. Do I, am I understanding that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you are a junior this year. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So is this your third year of the FFA? Yes, it is. Okay. What brought you in? Why did you join the FFA? I joined the FFA thinking that it would be a good opportunity for me to learn a few things that come when it comes to, um, um, agriculture i feel like i could get into that a lot more okay because i feel like in the future i may go from just mowing yards to more on the agricultural side with um livestock and stuff okay interesting well how did you even learn about the ffa how did you know it was an option then that it existed well it all started back in i think sixth or seventh grade when i had a couple of my teachers recommended me to go into the FFA and I was kind of, kind of iffy about it, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, I ended up joining three years ago. Okay. So mm -hmm. did, what did the teachers tell you? Like they, why did they think it would be such a good fit for you and why were they encouraging you to, to do that? Um, because I always, they knew that I lived on, they knew that I lived on, somewhat a farm and mm -hmm. i was always was always outside i was always trying to find something okay. to do keep myself occupied on the outdoor side instead of indoors okay so they convinced you to join but you've stayed in it you're just wrapping up your third year in the ffa so what what has it been about being in the ffa that you've liked that you keep coming back i think i think it's the fact that um it's all it's always something new it's always something new that you learn when you come into the ffa um whether it's whether it has to do with livestock or even just like plants you know mm -hmm. greenhouse greenhouses um like like ner like owning a nursery you know that's something i've always thought about trying to do is starting a nursery is that right Oh, very interesting. So 
uh, not only the mechanical side of things, but you like the uh, kind of getting your hands in the dirt side of things. Yes. Yeah. yeah very cool. Well, that's really interesting. I want to I want to get to this business you've got going on restoring dirt bikes because I'm fascinated by it. Let's do this really quick. I'd love to acknowledge your FFA advisors. Uh, how many do you have there at Tunstall? FFA advisors. Yes. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure, but I think think two. Two. Well, who are those folks? I th- I'm pretty sure Morgan Washburn and Jessica Jones. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for acknowledging them. Well, Isaiah, let's talk about your supervised agricultural experience. So I know that you had described it as uh, kind of fixing up and reselling dirt bikes. Is there a name for this business or tell us more about this and what you're doing? There, there isn't a name for the business. Exactly. I just, I haven't taken it to that extent. I just, mm-hmm. um, I feel like it's a good way for me to make profit. I've always okay. like, whether it's a dirt bike or even a four wheeler or a lawnmower, okay. you can always buy something like that. Like messed up buy the parts, fix it up and sell it. It's pretty simple, straightforward. I mean, I've done that since, since my dad got me into it a few years ago. I think I started in like seventh grade okay. when he started getting me into it. And so, I've just always thought that it was a really good money-making scheme. <laughs> it is a really good money-making scheme. I like this idea. So uh, your dad got you into it. Did he, he give you your, kind of teach you initially how to work on motors and do things like that? He did. It's, it, it was really, really confusing at first, but after seeing it over and over from two stroke motors to four stroke motors, it's, it, it seems pretty simple. Now I prefer two stroke motors because they're more simple, Okay. but yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was going to ask you that, but you like the two strokes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very cool. Now, your dad got you started. He was teaching you about uh, working on small engines and, and doing all of this. Were you able to take any courses throughout uh, these first three years of the FFA that have helped you in this business? Um, no, I haven't. I've kind of, I've kind of used what I've, you, what I've, what I've learned from my dad. Mm-hmm. And I use a lot of online websites and manuals that I can order to okay. figure out how to do these things and yeah and so no no small engine repair or welding or anything like that through the ffa so far no sir okay all right interesting now as far as uh making a profit and understanding how to record keep and know if you're you know track your expenses you know if you're making a profit overall do you learn some things like that going through the ffa How to make a profit? Well, so, how to how to keep track of your records so you can determine whether or not you're making a profit? Well, I always I always go for go for um a bike that I think well a manufacturer like Yamaha uh-huh. they their parts are always they're not they're not super expensive you know. Okay. The more that the more expensive the parts are, the less profit I'm going to make if I rebuild an engine or something sure. to sell it. I always go for um, mostly Yamaha because their parts are fairly fairly low priced, and I can rebuild an engine and make much more profit than I would if it was um, Husqvarna or a KTM. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Now, how do you keep track of all this for your record book so you can use this as your SAE for the FFA? How do I keep track of it? Yeah. All the information that you have to enter in for your SAE. I use this app on my phone called Notes and I put in the initial price of the bike itself. Okay. And then the the parts, each part that I bought. And then um, after I sell the bike, I total the amount of how much I sold it for, how much I made a profit off of, and I keep it all in my notes. Gotcha. Okay. And I think that's kind of what I was trying to, trying to get at is I know that there's a record keeping component, uh, to being in the FFA and, and doing a supervised agricultural experience. And, and, you know, it's interesting. You've got to know how to fix up engines. You've got to understand what parts to purchase. You got to know 
what their value is once you get it fixed up so you can sell it for a profit. But you got to keep records on all that or you'll never really be able to track how your performance is going in your business. And I think that's kind of the part I was I was shooting for. So you are keeping records like that for your SAE. Yes, sir. Okay. Very interesting. Now, when it comes to finding, I guess, broken down motorcycles that you can fix up and then resell, how do you go about finding those? Mm, I, I use Facebook Marketplace a lot. I go on Facebook Marketplace and I, I put in, I put in, um, I put in an ad for anyone who has blown up, broken down dirt bikes that. They either want to give away or sell for a low price or even part out, you know, mm -hmm. and I go for those, purchase those bikes and I analyze everything that needs to be done, order the parts and so on. Okay. And then the, when you, when you have it ready to, to sell or to resell back to Facebook marketplace, do you find that to be the best place to market these? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I highly suggest Facebook marketplace. Okay. Now, are you a writer in addition to the the person that's fixing them up and selling them? Excuse me. Are you are you a dirt bike rider as well? Oh, I've always rode dirt bikes since I was the age of four years old. I've rode all my life, all my life, pretty much dirt bikes. Yeah, very good. Well, you know, it's it's a really interesting business for you to to have the skills to be able to grab a piece of equipment like that add value to it, then sell it and make money. You can kind of do it all on your own terms. Um, you're selling a product at the end. You know what you've got into it. You know how much you're making. And uh, it's a very interesting way to make money. Have you ever had a job outside of working for yourself so far? Outside of working for myself? Um, yes. I worked for a man named Austin Lewis, and he is... He, um, I don't know the name of his business. He puts in bids for certain places like, um, let's just say like Target or something. He uh -huh. puts in a bid for them and he does all of their landscaping and I will go out and help him do that. Gotcha. Okay. So at this point, have you had enough experience both working for somebody else and then working for yourself that you could, you could tell us if you have a preference, like which one do you like best? Does, does one stand out? over the other well i would say that landscaping is more consistent because okay. um you're not always going to find uh what you need when it comes to their bikes and mm -hmm. stuff i think landscaping is much a much more consistent way of um doing that but i still enjoy rebuilding their bike motors okay yes. That's funny. Uh, I mean, you're just getting started in this, but you just described the exact difference between working for yourself and running your own business and working for somebody else. It's that consistency. And when you're an entrepreneur, when you're starting your own business, like what you do with the the refurbishing and the repair of motorcycles, it 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 is sporadic. It's not consistent like it is working for somebody and getting a oh, yes. a steady paycheck. Yeah, that's it's funny that you're you're saying the exact thing that people write books about 30 years from now. You know, 30 years older than you. So. Uh, you're discovering that already, which is really, really valuable. That's great. Uh, so when it comes to fixing up lawnmowers and things like that, are you doing any repairs for other people? Or are you simply doing exactly what you're doing with motorcycles, finding something that's old, not working, getting it running, and then reselling it? I I do that. I, I can't think. Um, I can't think of a time that someone has given me a bike to work on and then okay. sell back to them I, or whatever. I, I've always just gone for some something that, that I, I don't really know about, you know? Sure. Someone, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, so Isaiah, uh, at this point, uh, you are, you're just wrapping up your junior year of high school. You got one year to go. Are you going to continue with the same supervised agricultural experience for your senior year? Um. I'm thinking with the profits that I make with selling dirt bikes, I'm going to take that and start my own lawn care business oh, and interesting. mow yards for myself. And I would think that maybe I could possibly expand from there. Okay. Mowing yards and then multiply. Yeah, absolutely. You could. I, 
you know, I not not that it's all about money or anything like that, but as I I interview FFA students all over the country, I've interviewed some. I've interviewed probably four or five American Star winners in entrepreneurship or agribusiness, and they've got incredible lawn care businesses. I mean, they've got employees, they got multiple vehicles. So you're absolutely it's a right. Great business to get into. Yes. It really is, and it it can expand really really fast, really big, and uh, it can be a really, really successful venture for the rest of your life if you want it to be. So yeah, I think it's a great idea. And and speaking of that, I mean, you'll graduate high school in just a little bit over a year. What do you want to do after high school? Do you have any idea yet? Um, I think after high school, I'm going to continue, continue um, lawn care, still rebuilding dirt bike motors on the side. Um, I say personally, work as much as I can until the age to where I think I have a lot of money. And then I think I'm going to get into rental properties and yeah, gotcha. rental properties. And I don't know. I just, it's sort of a, sort of an endless thing for me. I just, it seems like every day that I wake up, there's something new. It's a, okay. whether, whether it's um storage unit, storage units, I've always wanted to, if I have enough money, I wanted to do that one day. Um, multiple rental prop rental properties, it's endless things. Well, you definitely have the uh, the outlook of an entrepreneur, Isaiah. There's no question about that because you're seeing all these opportunities already. You've got these long term goals uh, for doing things that are all, you know, you all the responsibility is on your shoulders, but of course, all the all the upsides on your shoulders too when you do that. So you've got a great vision for the future. I'm very excited to see where you take it. And before we wrap up, I'd love to get your advice for other students out there. Uh, why, why, when you look into your future, why do you see things where you have the ultimate responsibility? What is it about that that appeals to you? Well, the way that I think about it is, I think the best advice that I can give is to, is to I would say, go your own way. Don't follow behind others, but lead your own path come up with new ideas, um, think of something that you don't think that anyone else would think of and stay in that direct path instead of going off and into traffic, if you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Well, Isaiah, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on today. All right. It was nice meeting you. Well, thank you for being here, everybody, and thank you to Isaiah Hopkins for coming on the Off Farm Income Podcast today. Hey, we would love it if you would click that subscribe button and become a subscriber to our YouTube channel here. And also, we would love to have you as a follower on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, as well as Facebook. Did I say all of them? I think I did. I think I did, everybody. Hey, as always, until next time, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business agriculture.